I'm embarrassed to say that this is the state of my garage. I have a single car garage that's also used as a DIY workshop, but as you can see, there's hardly any room for anything. I also have to store three kids' bikes and sports equipment. Not to mention all the other stuff like strollers, my lawnmower, a snowblower, shovels, and more. This week I'm tackling my garage organization with a bunch of really budget DIYs. I'm gonna be hanging the bikes from the ceiling, adding a really cool electrical panel cover because that's such an eyesore, and painting my garage door a fun color. Hey guys, it's Hannah. Today I'm gonna be sharing all about how I'm making over my garage. My garage is a legit disaster. So we live in a townhouse with a single car garage and we wanted to fit our car in there for a long time, but it's just not possible. We've got bikes and strollers and sports equipment and I've got my whole workshop in there. Eventually the goal is for my garage to look like this. The first thing I'm starting out by doing is clearing out this corner. I'm gonna hang a bunch of bikes. As you know, when kids grow out of their bikes and if you have more than one kid, you're keeping all their old bikes and there just isn't enough space to store it. So I'm gonna be hanging the smaller bikes and also the scooters from the ceiling. All right, now that I got the space cleared out, we are gonna hang up Mikhail's bike. So um, these are the hooks that I used, okay? I got them from Amazon. Um, you want to make sure they go into a stud. They come with anchors. Do not use an anchor. They need to go into stud. I'll link these below in the description box because they're such an affordable way to hang your bike. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is actually measure the distance between the middle of the tires. That's where the hooks are going to hang. So, so make my own bike approximately 30 inches. I had a really hard time figuring out where the studs in the ceiling were. They're actually called ceiling joists, and I couldn't figure out which way they were running. So I think I finally understand that the joists are running this way. So like me drilling all these holes in the middle makes no sense because the, you know, like everything is gonna be aligned this way. So that's the direction. So I'll measure the distance and see if, you know, we can get some other stuff hung. Okay, so once you drill a pilot hole, all you do is simply screw it in. You're gonna get to the point where you pass the drywall and you start to feel some resistance. You need to feel that resistance to make sure it's going into a stud. And then you have to make sure the hooks are facing the same way in order to actually hang your bike. This is such an easy way to get all those hand-me-down bikes out of the floor and onto the ceiling until your kids are ready for their next size. I was able to fit two scooters, two bikes, and a little trike. And in case you're wondering, nope, none of them hit our heads at all. My electrical panel is so unsightly. I actually hate this. Um, here's the idea. I'm actually gonna add a door that swings back and forth so that I can cover this up. Attach these L brackets to the sheathing plywood here, and then I secured a two x four onto it. Now from that two x four, I can actually mount my door. I needed to have it protrude out a little bit because of the depth of that electrical panel. To make this door, I'm using a bunch of scrap wood that I already had in my garage. So this is like a two for one project where I get to cover something that I hate and also use up my scrap wood. I use pilot holes to make the frame. Match them. So I think this is gonna be like a pretty fun project this week. So if you have this unsightly electrical box, definitely follow along, cause I'm sure you're gonna wanna replicate this. I'm using my favorite brad nailer to secure all this scrap MDF to the frame. I think it's gonna look pretty cool, almost like a shiplap door. Um, so Avash just asked me why I didn't line up either of the edges and that way I would only have to trim down one side. I don't know Avas. I don't know.
Well, you will notice that there were some pieces that were a bit too short. I'm not too worried about that because I have like endless trim in my garage, guys. So I'm gonna be actually trimming it out with this around the edges and I think that will just make it so much better. Even though this is a door made out of scrap wood, I still have to make it look amazing by mitering all the edges. Check this out, it's done. It looks pretty cool, but I need to secure it to the hinges and it's actually much heavier than I thought it was gonna be. I started to send Avas some telepathic messages to come help me, and he did. So at least it stands itself up, okay? It's not like falling down. Oh my god. <laughs> there you go, you made it to our... Pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Hey! Hey, hey, oh. hey. As you can see, I'm sometimes like impressed by my own abilities. You just start off by making something in your head and when you put it together, you're like, wow, this is actually super cool. Anytime you see me in this t-shirt, it's painting day. So we're gonna get to painting this. I'm gonna paint it um, like a really nice rich color. Um, I'm gonna start by actually priming it. So this is a great primer. I used it on my little dresser. Um, it's a great like all surface is kind of primer and it really sticks well. We're going to start painting the door and I'm using um, a trim, a door and trim enamel paint. Um, I found that this was just so much better when I painted that little dresser. Um, and then I'm going to be using a foam roller. So a foam roller ensures that you get like a really smooth finish. So this is great when you're painting any type of furniture or door. Um, and I think this is probably the last time I'm going to use this paint tray. What do you say? <laughs> it's got like six colors in there. All right, so it's time for the last coat and I wanted to show you a tip about painting with a brush. So I usually like to use my short hand brush. I have no idea where it is, honestly, in my garage. But I saw this tip that Sandy gave and it is to hold your brush like this right at the end because when you hold it here, it puts a lot of like strain on the whole arm and you get very fatigued. So hold it down here and you can brush for a lot longer. It's a really good tip. You could totally leave this plain, but then I thought I wanted to make this kind of like a mural. And so I'm gonna be adding a really cool pattern and adding my branding to this as well. Luckily, my local library has a laser cutter, so I went and I got these letters printed. It just costs like 20 bucks, and I think it's gonna make the door much more personal and to have my own branding on it. And then I'm painting it this beautiful blush color that's gonna be the same color as my door. Isn't this so cool? You wouldn't even know there's an electrical panel behind that. Back in my painting t-shirt, which can only mean one thing, we are painting the door today. So this is an exterior door, like it's our garage door. And I actually have already painted it once. I painted it white. And as you can see, it was just like no point. So um, I'm gonna paint it a really, really fun color. It's gonna be the accent color for the garage. I'm gonna paint the door. I'm so excited because I'm gonna paint it pink. So I actually asked Avast, like, are you okay if I paint our door pink? And he was so cool. He was like, yeah, I think that'd be like totally cool. It's a good idea. And I was like, oh, cool. So we're gonna paint the door pink and it's gonna be so fun. We're gonna start with the prep work of the door. And yes, I know this is boring, but I recently had someone message me and tell me that um, the paint was chipping off their interior doors. Like they gave it a coat of paint and it was chipping off. And so my immediate question was, did you do the prep work? Did you de gloss? Did you sand? Did you prime? And they said, no. So what's the alternative? Well, you have to start back at the beginning, sand off your paint and start again. So do the prep work once, okay? I promise it's worth it. So we're gonna de gloss and then we're gonna prime. Okay. 
This garage is really my space, so that's why I picked this mauve blush color. So first glance, what are we thinking? Do we love it? I mean, I definitely do, so I guess that's what matters. I really like how those doors coming together. I know this is a garage organization project, but no one ever said your garage had to be ugly. So that's why I decided to paint this door. Now I've gotten the door painted, but we haven't started on the serious organization yet. And this is what we're left with. So stay tuned because next week we're going to attack all the big organization bits. I've got this really cool organization system that I'm going to be using. I think I tackled all these budget DIYs, which I think are great. Next week I'm going to get to all the really heavy um, organization. So I'm going to be adding wall paneling to hang stuff from the walls, cabinets, and just a lot more organization. So I'll see you next week.